Hello everyone, my name is Joseph and I'm a freelance uh, video photographer and editor from uh, Gothenburg and this was the stuff when I was seven. Back then I made a lot of kid films and when I was 15 I started to ride uh, bikes. Me and my boys were doing crazy wheelies and I filmed it and I put it online. The videos became quite popular here in Sweden, which had a great moped community back then. Me and my friends, we traveled around and did bike shows and meetups. During the years I created and worked on different YouTube channels while riding. Our sponsor had a FS700 and I thought that camera was so cool. In the end I started to lose interest in riding and I was more and more getting into making videos again. I picked up a GH4 but my dream camera at the time was the Sony FS7. It had everything I thought was cool about the FS700 but in a more versatile form factor. I could really see back then that that would have been the perfect tool for filming action on the road. But I made no money making videos at the time. But during a job interview at the Swedish electric car brand Polestar, in the office there was a huge backlit canvas and on it was a behind the scenes picture from a commercial for the prototype car and I stood there just looking at it and I thought to myself oh I need that in my life I wasn't thinking about the car I was thinking about the camera crane in the shot uh, luckily my friend Alex who's a good friend of mine and someone I really trust was also applying for the same job <laughs> I went into the interview and uh, gave the ent interviewers uh, my recommendation for him and then I went home and I applied to film school. When I finished film school uh, and started to do freelance work, I was uh, rocking one A7S Mark I, the original, and one A7 III and this old Sony F3. They are uh, all great cameras, uh, but uh, they are getting uh, old. The uh, A7 III, I... Broke the display twice, the microphone jack is broken, the HDMI port is uh, loose, one SD card slot is uh, not working, and the A7S it's just dead. I got a gig out of town shooting a couple of presentations. Uh, at the same time there was an ad for two used F7 for a very good price close by. About 2,500 euros for both of the units. And one thing that uh, really bothers me with the FS7 is the lack of time code. Uh, my brother is my sound guy sometimes and with the F3 we can just uh, sync up before shooting and that's really handy. Um, luckily for me the guy with the camera asked me if he could keep the FS7 grip and give me an XDCA box instead. And that's the way to get time code with the FS7. It has a little port. Uh, and the other camera came with another grip. Uh, 
the job I was booked for was a good first job for, for those cameras. Uh, so there I went, bought them and shot the presentations. Luckily it was the last job before the summer holidays when everyone stops working. Perfect time to get to know your new gear. I took one FS7 with me to our uh, old family summer homestead. Uh, I did some test shooting and here is what I learned. I shot a lot of 1080p on my old Ursa Mini when just uh, filming random stuff. And my F3 only shoots 1080p as well. So that's where I started with the FS7. However, that didn't work very well. My footage had a lot of artifacts. Initially, I hated shooting on this monitor. I couldn't get focus at all. But I eventually changed my mind about it. But more on that later. The FS7 isn't very good at shooting HD in Super 35 mode. That's kind of a bummer when you want to save space. Uh, it has a smaller file size codec. However, it's not good for log and DaVinci Resolve does not play well with it. Uh, at the time of recording this video, the Fairlight page won't play the audio files properly. For best performance, this camera needs to be shot in 4K in XAVCI. So I bought two 240 gig cards and it cost almost as much as one of the units. But if I am doing longer recordings with both cameras, I need to shoot in a standard picture profile and in XAVC L. Uh, it's not optimal, but most jobs requiring longer recordings usually don't need a crazy quality or dynamic range. The image you see now is actually recorded in Rec. 709 and in XAVC-L. In uh, Cine-EI mode the base ISO looks very high at uh, 2000, but that does not really translate to final exposure. It's basically as bright as other 800-ish cameras when processed in the grade. Uh, these shots here are taken at uh, night. I think it's like... Uh, two or three in the morning. Uh, however, it's uh, far up north and the sun doesn't really set, so uh, it's a little bit unfair to call it night. Yeah, to go out. The aperture is around T1.5 here, so you can imagine it's uh, still kind of dark. Uh, this camera is not as good in low light as other newer Sony cameras, but as long as I bring the right lens, I don't really have any issues with it. Let's talk about sound. Uh, I was really impressed on how good the preamps are in this camera. Uh, if the sound is a little bit uh, too low, you can easily pump up the volume a lot before it starts to introduce noise. And it has all the good stuff like an inbuilt compressor and a limiter. I use the limiter a lot. Uh, I can record loud in the settings for dialogue and then the camera can stop it from clipping when sudden loud noises appear. <laughs> Very handy. It also has an internal mic and it's super useful to have scratch audio for syncing, but it's also a good backup. 
Uh, and the quality isn't that bad actually. Uh, here's one example while I use it as a backup. Uh, the XLR mic glitched, but I was able to take a few words uh, that the internal mic recorded and I was able to save the shot. Det är var en normal vanlig dag på Nordsjön. Det är så här det ska vara. Det är var en normal vanlig dag på Nordsjön. Det är ingenting att förfärdas över. Det är så här det ska vara. I'm planning to make a, a video about sound for documentary work. So subscribe and stay tuned for that one. Here is me playing around a bit when I just bought them, uh, comparing it uh, to my F3. First I did uh, just a conversion to Rec. 709. And here is the F7, same thing. And the practical light in the background, they clip at around the same point, so no difference there. And here I did a little bit of color correction as well, take some of the red out. And here's the F3 with the same grade. They look pretty similar, but the F3 is much softer. The F7's colors are a bit more like colored plastic, and the F3's colors are more muted and organic, pretty much as I expected. Now we're gonna talk about my favorite topic about this camera, the rigging part, or the lack of rigging part. Initially when I got the cameras, I immediately started to build one out. I moved my rigging parts from my F3 to one of the F7s. I put the EVF on, I have the V-mount adapter, a VCT plate and all that good stuff. But after using it a couple of times, I really realized that the best part about this camera is that it actually works very well without any extra accessories. I'm gonna show you how I usually run it uh, nowadays. I have a V-mount uh, adapter uh, with the XDCA box. I like having the V-mount battery in the back because it gives you a little bit of counterbalance when you're doing uh, shoulder work. Uh, but if you want a more versatile build that both works handheld and on the shoulder, then a little bit shorter camera is actually better. And uh, the original batteries give you uh, a long time. To play with the camera, I think I get around 350 minutes on one of these batteries. I used a uh, VCT plate for my F3 to give it something to rest on the shoulder, but I have pretty much never used it on the F7 because it already has space here for, for it to go on the shoulder and uh, even though it may not be the most comfortable uh, to have on your shoulder like just like that. It reduces weight and in the end I think weight wins over uh, comfortability. <laughs> I have built my own little extension for the mic uh, because the original mic holder is uh, pretty far in front so you have to use a short microphone and my microphone is pretty long so I use this. I would say the biggest downside of uh, using uh, a camera like the F7 is actually the crop factor on the sensor. Uh, Sony has a lot of great E-mount lenses, but they are all for full frame. And uh, I really like shooting wide angle, and uh, especially if I'm doing documentary where I am the only person who does sound. When you have a uh, wider lens it means that you can get much more closer to the action and in that way I also get the microphone closer to the people that I'm shooting. I have one good wide angle zoom the 16 to 28 from uh, Tokina. So what I did was I bought uh, one normal PL mount for it and uh, one PL with a speed booster. Uh, 
Uh, then this lens can uh, act uh, like wide medium and a super wide angle lens. It's the Mark 1 and it doesn't have the locking uh, E-mount. Uh, so this is not the most secure connection in the world, but I rather have it a little bit uh, shaky with the mount and not having a lot of accessories and uh, lens supports on it. As I mentioned before, I didn't really like shooting with this uh, monitor because I couldn't get focus. I now realize that shooting it in 4K gives you a more precise focus peaking on the monitor and I actually think it's uh, pretty good. Uh, all you really need a monitor for, at least in documentary situation, is framing and focus. And now I've been shooting with it for a while and uh, none of my professional works are out of focus. I pretty much nail all my shots. Only time I might miss focus is when it's very bright and I forget this one. And uh, this guy gets a lot of hate online for being uh, uh, flimsy and plasticky and uh, not that great, but it has never come off for me. I think it's a really smart solution and uh, one problem with uh, having a, an EVF, you, you need to have a lot of DTAP cables and it's just more to manage and more to power. If I know that I'm going to shoot outside and it's sunny, then I will just simply put this on. I think the design of the FS7 is just great, the way that you can flip the monitor in any direction and for some reason I don't like shooting with the EVF on the side of the camera. I would like to have the EVF in the middle. I don't know why but I, I think it feels awkward like facing to the side of the camera. You know I want to be in line with whatever I'm shooting. If it's a bright day and I want to use the monitor, if there is sun coming into my eye or on the monitor, you just flip it down and then use it like that. There is one more thing that is just fantastic with this camera. It's actually the top handle. Uh, to, to have the record button here is awesome, but it also has an inbuilt strap holder and this has been a game changer for me. It's so handy to have like a, a pretty lightweight setup that I can just, I can throw it on my back and then I can move around, I can use both my hands and then if something happens, I can just take the camera out and I'm ready to go. The strap also gives me a, another point of contact. So if I want the shot to be stable, I can just put force on the strap and if I want to use it on the shoulder, just flip the monitor and then I'm ready to go. And then down again, yeah, you get the picture. I think this is my favorite thing about this camera is that it just works the way it is. No need for fiddly solutions for anything, it just works. And even though the screen is not the best resolution and it's plasticky. I love that because it can take a beating. Uh, when I was on the ship I was so glad that I didn't have a monitor that I had to be careful. I could just fold it in and then throw the camera away. I'd be climbing to the rig and, and if I bumped the camera it didn't matter. It won't break. This thing is built to take a punch. I'm gonna enjoy shooting with this camera as uh, long as I need to. Thanks for watching and if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and uh, if you have any suggestions on another video I should do about the FS7 or the Sony F3 uh, please let me know. Bye!